Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got a dream from a five-year-old to share with you. And let me, um, let's see, today is still Tuesday, July the 14th. It's 2.50 p.m. All right, I got this yesterday at 3.46 p.m. in my email and had read it and asked, it, could I share it? And she said, of course, this is Daphne, who we prayed for, that had such a high fever. She'd gone to the ER, got back home, still sick. Well, anyway, she's all, she's all better. Her mom is still praying for continued healing, but she is better. And she had this dream. Okay, so she says, let me see where it starts here. She told me she had a dream. She was at a Chick-fil-A. The kids have never ate there. Aubrey put in parentheses that they have never eaten there. Okay. And she was watching the workers being made to, by monsters, to put what she called garbage into our food. She said to me, I think they are putting virus in the fast food. Why they put garbage in my food, Mama? Unquote. Okay, that all started with the word monsters. She put in quotes. They were being, the monsters were their supervisors. The monsters were making them put garbage into the food. She said, I think they are putting virus in the fast food. Why they put garbage in my food, Mama? Unquote. She then said, when they serve the food to the people, those who eat it turn to zombies. Her dream goes hand in hand with what the Lord has been showing me. Disease food, eating. She put that in quotes. Quote, disease, food, eating, unquote. She says, try not to eat fast food and pray over every single meal. No wonder the enemy has been after her. The Lord said in the last days he would pour out his spirit on all flesh. That's right, he did. This is certainly happening, and I believe this 100%, because I have had my own confirmation on it concerning food. Yes, the Lord gave me a message a long time ago telling me to tell people, a uh, message said we must pray over everything we eat. Even pray over the food you buy from the store. Now that I'm bad about. I don't remember to do that. I have got to start doing that. Praying over the food you buy from the store. Maybe even grow your own veggies. That's wonderful if you're able to do that. Things are not as they were, nor will they ever be. God bless you, sister. Okay, now, things... I don't think you're going to have time to get even one crop in. Not the first rounders. That's what the word I was trying to think of. <laughs> the first fruits. Uh, Kathy from Team Jesus called it, well, it's grafted in Team Jesus, not the other Team Jesus. There was another Team Jesus. Okay, it's not the same one. Um, anyway, um, She called a, calls us first rounders. Well, it is in a way. You can think of it that way. The first ones to get our glorified body. But we'll be back to help everybody that got left behind. Get food and water and heal them. And get people saved. And knowing Jesus the way they need to. And that sort of thing. Whatever our assignments are. That's what we'll be doing. Okay, now, Aubrey just put in a prayer request. So I'm going to add it to this. It's very important. 
My husband just called me a, about in tears. He was about in tears. A man he works with got news today that his 20-year-old son, Robert, has leukemia. That is so sad. The father is, of course, a complete mess right now. Please pray for this young man and request prayers concerning him if you can find the time. Yes, so I'm requesting prayers for this man named Robert. Our God is bigger than any disease. I don't care if it's leukemia or Lou Gehrig's disease. Our God is bigger than all of them put together. And he can heal this man if we will put up our petitions to him. Also, a man named Johnny Hall, I guess that was Johnny Hall, who has cancer as well. These last days are testing a lot of us. I'm holding on to Daniel 3.27. We will pass through the fire and not be burnt. Well, I believe many of us have been passing through our fire. And I don't know if we, anybody, will go through a literal fire and not be burnt. It's very possible that those left behind might have to. It, because you're left behind for a reason. You haven't gone through the tribulation that the first rounders have. Or maybe you think you have, but you're holding grudges against the people that put you through the fire. You see, we got to forgive everybody. Everybody, everything. You can't hold grudges that's not that's living in unforgiveness you have to love God most more than your life here on earth you have to love your neighbor as yourself and that means everybody else besides you is your neighbor okay and I keep stressing that and these are just things we have to do. We have to say, I'm sorry for, I, for sinning today, Lord. We have to keep our garments spotless. And it's not an easy walk to stay on the straight and narrow. It's not always easy, but it's doable. You know why? Because when you love Jesus and you, you keep your eyes heavenward and you you can try to imagine now Jesus knows that I love to fish really love to fish but not more than I love him I'll bet you he'll have the best stocked lake and my mansion will have a room with rods and reels and those wormy things what do you call those little things you you hook on the end of the hook you have lots of hooks ha <laughs> lures that's the word you have all them pretty lures. I bought them for my husband before. And uh, they got so many of them. And I'm like, what are what are all these fake fishes for? I mean, how, you know, people who love to fish know. But I'm saying, he, he, you might love that. And you might think, wow, I look forward to that. Fishing with Jesus, you know. How... Uh, I don't know if he actually fished with Peter, but he certainly helped Peter fish, didn't he? And he got that, 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 uh, I was talking to Kathy last night about that 153. What does that 153 mean? And she said somebody came up with some mathematical way of figuring out that the multitude too large to number might be uh, either 1.53 billion or 15.3 billion. Let's see how many people are on the earth. Eight, isn't it nearly 8 billion people on the earth? So it had to be 1.53 billion is the number too large to count. 
Well, I don't know, but I hope it's more than that because it's a number too large to count. I'm hoping it's like five billion, you know. Oh, it's going to be so amazing, y'all, to be around people who love Jesus like we do. I can't wait to get there and to hug the Lord and to bow down in front of Abba and worship Him. The amazement will bowl us over. That's something I, I hope I, that's in heaven is the most awesome bowling alley ever. And I would like to bowl with Jesus. How about you? Anybody like to bowl? It was so popular up north. Down here, not as much. But there was bowling alleys all over the place in Akron. And those places were kept up. They were so nice. And I was on a league every year of my life up there. I mean, once I got old enough. Anyway, and down here too in Alabama, I was on a league till I couldn't be. So that's you know that's just a little something. That's you know that's just like a the, not the icing on the cake. That's like the little petal that's on the flower that's on the icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? Keep your mind thinking on these things that. Jesus knows you like, so what will he have prepared for you? Okay, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the dream and the prayer requests, and over myself and my computer, my internet connection, and the video itself, if I didn't say that already, <laughs> and each and every one of you, your devices, and all your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.